Hey guys, welcome back, and in this new video we're going to be installing a few privileged escalation scripts for Linux, Windows, and Active Directory targets. So let's get started from our Kali command line. The first thing we're going to do will be creating a dedicated subdirectory to stash our scripts. Uh, we can call it Provesk. Now we can see into it, and uh, we can create separate subdirectories for different scripts. Uh, we can add the p flag to the make directory command, and that is going to create three folders for Linux, Windows, and P's. We're going to get started with P's first. Open up our browser tab and navigate to Carlos Polop P's and G. Uh, particularly if you guys are prepping for OSCP or taking part in CTFs, these scripts are absolutely amazing. Uh, let's copy that link and run a sudo git clone to grab the repo. So we do sudo git clone ps-ng.git. Let that run. We can cd into it, and as we can see here, we have both linps and winps for Unix and Windows targets. We're going to check out winps first. So we can see here that we have both uh, winps bat and uh, winps.exe. Linpeas, of course, is available in shell script. Now let's go up the tree and back into our Provest directory. Uh, we're going to move into our Linux folder and let's open up our browser tab and check out Linux Exploit Suggester 2. Uh, this is a Perl script. And as you can see here in the description, this script is used to find privilege escalation vulnerabilities in Linux targets and is particularly useful in CTFs and exam environments, and I'm pretty sure that they're referring to OICP. Um, once again, we're going to grab that link and clone the repo on our Kali machine. So we copy that. Um, before we can do anything, uh, we have to create another directory. We can call it less for Linux Exploit Suggester. CD into that. And then we do sudo git clone. Slap that in. Linux Exploit Suggester 2.git. All right, so now we're going to check out this script. Linux Exploit Suggester 2.perl nano and as you can see here uh, what it does in a nutshell is that it runs uname r to determine the target's operating system and then it returns a list of possible exploits definitely a very good tool especially for capture the flags all right so now we're back into our linux directory and the next tool we're going to install is linux priv checker which is a python script that checks for misconfigs and writable files and other possible provest vectors on Linux targets. A bit of a disclaimer here, so Linux Perf Checker is a bit outdated as a tool, but it's still very effective if you guys are, let's say, in PWK or doing CTFs. So we're going to repeat the same process, just copy the link and git clone the repo. Uh, let's make another directory. We can call it Linux uh, Priv, so make their Linux Priv cd into that and then we do a git clone paste that in clone it and there you have it now if you encounter any issues you might want to run this uh, requirement.txt uh, but if you're running an updated version of python 3 it should be all right Now, the last Linux-specific tool we're going to be installing is definitely uh, one of my favorites. And this is Linux Smart Enumeration by Diego Tratos. I hope I'm not butchering the, the name too much. So this is a shell script, and it's got an awesome feature, and it's uh, process monitor capability. So what it does, after running enumeration on the target, it will monitor running processes for one minute, and then it pens those results in the output, which is fantastic. So once again, you grab that link back to Kali, make a folder for the script. Uh, we can call it a uh, tray toss. So make their tray toss. All right. 
So now we can check out the script. There you go. Done. CD into that. Let's use nano LSE. And as you can see, another feature of Linux Smart Enumeration is that it uses different colors in the output, much like Limpy's. <clears throat> And this is certainly a great, great tool to have. Perfect. So right now, um, so let's get started with a few Windows-specific scripts. Uh, the first one we're going to look into is JAWS, which is a PowerShell script. So we're going to make, um, we're going to move into the Windows directory. Uh, and here I'm quoting the official GitHub page. Um, JAWS helps pen testers and CTFers identify privilege escalation vectors on Windows system. Uh, instead of git cloning, this time I'm going to use wget to uh, grab the script. So I'm going to copy that. Now get back to our terminal. Uh, wget. This thing, let's paste it in. Hold on a second. I actually forgot to make a directory for it. So here we go. Make directory JAWS. And now we do, we CD into that and we can do a wget, paste that in, dash o for output, jaws.ps1. Let that run. Echo dollar sign question mark we have execute of zero and here you have it well we actually have two files in here because I think the uh, the old flag was redundant but still done so <clears throat> next we're gonna grab Windows exploit suggester so we have two options available uh, we could either use pip or uh, git clone the repo directly uh, we can try pip first. So pip install wes and g, copy that. Oops, uh, wrong tab. So we're going to create a directory for it. We're going to do make directory wes and g. Move into that. So we're going to do pip install wes ng. See if that works. And it's done. So now to run it from the current path, uh, you would have to export it, but I'm not going to do that right now. So let's just uh, git clone the script instead. So we grab that link. back to our terminal and we do a git clone let it run cd into that and as you can see we have this python this west.py script in here so moving on to the next one so far we have installed jaws and windows exploit suggester uh, the next one on the list is going to be Windows Enum, which once again is a PowerShell script. You can find the link down below in the description. Uh, so this is a PowerShell uh, Prevest script and one of the few that I have actually found useful in real life engagements. Uh, so you can go ahead, copy this link and git clone the repo in our Kali. Let's go back. So we copy that. Let's make a directory for it. So we're going to do make der um, Absalom, who is the author of the script. Again, I apologize for the, uh, the, the pronunciation. I think it's Absalom. Okay, so sudo git clone, paste that, windows enum.git, clone it. Let's check it out, cd into that, and there you have it. We have this PowerShell script. 
So now it's time to install, in my opinion, one of the most powerful enumeration tools when it comes to Active Directory pen testing, and that would be Bloodhound. So we're back uh, into our home directory, and if we type Bloodhound, um, actually we have to do a sudo get install, if I could type apt get install Bloodhound. Uh, this is going to be a multi-step process, and it's not as straightforward as just cloning a script off of GitHub. Um, once the installation is complete, uh, one thing we need to do is we need to reconfigure uh, Neo4j, mainly just change the default password. So Bloodhound is basically a single-page JavaScript web application with a Neo4j uh, database and a PowerShell ingester. So once we fire off the Neo4j console, a remote interface is going to pop up on port 7474. And now we can authenticate with default creds, which are both Neo um, Neo J4. I'm sorry, Neo4j. So once we log in, uh, we can set up a new password. So write whatever you want. Make sure that this is a unique password and is not the same as your, God forbids, like your root user or any of the users that you have on Kali. And there you have it. It's done. So now if we go back to our terminal, we're going to split it. And if we just type Bloodhound, uh, we're redirected to this login page. We can authenticate with the uh, password. The username is still Neo4j, and the password is the uh, password we just created. And here we have it. So we have this Bloodhound interface. Obviously, we should run an ingester on target first before we can import anything, but that's something that uh, we'll look in a future video. And done. So once again, this is a recap of the tools we have installed. Uh, you guys make sure you let me know what you think down below in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next. Thank you.